Hello, everyone, and welcome to our webinar today, How to Build a ChatGPT App Using JSON Data and Single Store Chi. My name is Matt Brown, and I'll be your moderator today. Before we begin, just a few logistical reminders. Today's discussion is being recorded, and you are currently in a listen-only mode. You may submit questions throughout the session using the Q&A functionality in the lower section of your Zoom console. If this is your first time joining a single store webinar, heads up that we present weekly technical workshops demoing data and AI use cases and new technologies. In fact, next week we will be presenting how to drive 100x faster analytics for your MongoDB apps. During that time, Senior Technical Evangelist Akmal Chowdhury will show you how to drive 100x faster analytical queries on JSON using a MongoDB API that doesn't require any query changes or data transformations. It's very cool. If that topic sounds fun to you, feel free to register right now at the link that's on your screen or that QR code that you see on your slide. I will also paste this link into the chat in just a moment. But let's get back today to, to today's topic. FYI, we have fantastic technical experts who will be joining our Zoom Q&A. They have a good grasp of the technologies involved. They're ready to answer your questions as they come in. So please welcome Akmal, Vijay, and Eric Hansen. We'll try to get to as many of your questions as we can as they can come in interactively. I will also try to note a few for our live Q&A at the end of today's session. We'd love for you to try out today's technology. In fact, anyone who tries it out today will be entered for a chance to win new branded AirPods Pro. All you need to do is click this link that's on your screen, that bit.ly link, or hit that QR code that's on your screen, log into single store, either a free trial if you're a brand new user, existing account if you're already a customer, ongoing trial, Either way, we will check the folks who have logged into this link, and then we'll announce a winner by the end of today's session. So let me introduce our speaker for today. Jason Thorsness is a Senior Director of Engineering at Single Store. He spent over 16 years at Microsoft, where he rose through the ranks and became a Principal Software Engineer. Most recently, he's been hard at work here, laboring to bring the power of Single Store's vector search and fast analytics to the MongoDB API ecosystem. Welcome, Jason. You now have the floor. Uh, thanks, Matt. Um, okay, uh, I don't know. I don't know about laboring. It makes it sound less fun, but this is uh, this is all pretty fun. Um, and I have been been working on uh, JSON and uh, the stuff that you're going to see today. Uh, so, what will you see today? Um, I'm going to go over how to generate text embeddings from JSON data using OpenAI uh, APIs, how to store the JSON and along with the embeddings uh, efficiently in single store Chi and single store DB, uh, how to query those embeddings with vector semantic search, um, which is really cool. And you'll see that in a bit. Uh, and then finally, how to teach ChatGPT to build the queries for you using the embeddings and other fields in the JSON data which is uh, you know, really, really cool. So we'll get to all this in a bit. Um, and Single Store DB as a platform provides a unique combination of features that really make this scenario uh, work well. Um, so let's talk a little bit about C, uh, Single Store DB uh, for those of you who might not know uh, much about it. Uh, Single Store DB has a um, kind of a core storage engine that combines row storage concepts with uh, column store. We call that universal storage. And that um, kind of core storage engine provides a platform for a lot of different scenarios. Uh, it can do real-time analytics um, across uh, large amounts of data uh, by relying on some of the column store ability to aggregate quickly. But it can also do ultra fast like point lookups um, using some of the the row store capabilities. So um, it really the the one uh, engine can support uh, I guess you'd, you'd say multiple types of of uh, use cases. Um, it also has a fast ingestion and CDC pipeline to bring data in from other sources, and it runs in any um, 
any of the major clouds or in your on-premises uh, data center. Um, additionally, single store supports a wide variety of data types um, so that you can store the sort of data that you have. Um, we have traditional relational data. Uh, you can have geospatial. There's classic full text search, um, key value features, uh, JSON data, which we'll be using, and um, also time series and vector operations among, among others. And by virtue of supporting all these different data types, you're able to keep it all in one engine and not do uh, kind of more complicated multi-data store operations from your application. Um, and today we're really going to be focusing on two of those data types um, that I mentioned, uh, JSON and the vector functions for semantic search. Uh, the, um, the nice thing about having it in one database is we can use these together in a deeply integrated way, uh, which I'll get into. Um, before we jump to the, actually, no, I will talk about the demo first. Um, and then I'll give a bit of background about some of these concepts. Um, okay, so the demo that I put together today uh, uses a bunch of data from something called the Open Library. Uh, the Open Library is, um, uh, uh, one second. Just want to make sure that I, I never got a, signal that my audio is working. Yes. <laughs> OK, sorry about that. OK, and back. Um, didn't want to get the whole presentation with my microphone not activated. <laughs> OK, so uh, let's go back to the demo architecture. So um, I took this data set from Open Library. Open Library is a project of the Internet Archive, and that is um, uh, it's it's kind of like a universal library where anyone can go check out book information, check out books and um, find books that they're interested in, like any other library, except it's uh, open to anyone. Um, they dump a data set of all of their data, which you can use for uh, you know, finding, uh, you know, projects like this one where we're going to search over uh, book metadata as an example of text embeddings. I took about 340,000 records. This represents uh, the all the fiction and nonfiction books of their database and brought that into a, um, a loader program that's written in Node.js. Uh, Node.js loader program uses the OpenAI SDKs to generate uh, embeddings for the information in the uh, the book data, like titles, descriptions, um, all of that is fed into the OpenAI uh, uh, APIs to generate the embeddings. And then the program uses the MongoDB client to load all of that data into single store through single store Kai. Um, then we flip over to the other side where we have a client application this application is written in Next.js 13. It's a simple example of a search application. It will use OpenAI uh, APIs to generate embeddings for a search query provided by the user, and then um, submit that to the database to find matching items. Um, uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll show the next step of that, which is to use the ChatGPT APIs to also add structured query over the JSON fields. Um, but before we jump into the code behind this, uh, let's go over a few of the concepts. Um, so kind of fundamentally, what is an embedding? Um, so like concretely, it's a just a list of floating point numbers that represents a normalized uh, multidimensional vector. So you might think of a two-dimensional vector as like an arrow drawn on a chart um, where you can calculate the uh, similarity between vectors through operations like uh, dot dot product. Um, for these multidimensional vectors, they might have uh, like a thousand dimensions, uh, but you could still use that same dot product function to calculate uh, how similar they are. And the the interesting modern piece of this is the embeddings are generated with these large language models. 
and they're the model's representation of the meaning of some input text. Um, and the model is trained on a whole bunch of data from the internet and other sources. Uh, and these, um, like its representation of meaning is pretty close to how a human would think about it. So when you calculate the similarity between embeddings using the dot product operation, it, it tracks very closely how a human would think of the similarity between the text. Uh, and I'll show some examples of that in a bit. It's much more powerful than um, you know, classic full text search that's looking at just the words in the text. Uh, so how can text embeddings be used in single store DB? Um, so single store DB has a mature uh, set of SIMD accelerated vector operations. Uh, we've had this for a number of years and recently it's becoming very popular. Um, all you have to do is add a blob column to your table, uh, store the embeddings there, and then you can uh, use functions like dot product and other associated functions to calculate the distance between the stored embedding and an embedding in your query in order to find the closest batch. Uh, this can be extremely fast and it can be combined with other conditions in your query and other database features without requiring any kind of special client or, um, or you know, extra queries to other sources. Uh, and finally, let me say a bit about how JSON works in single store. So JSON is uh, you know, a super popular data format for the web. It's a structured combination of uh, nested uh, objects and arrays. Um, when you insert JSON data into single store, single store uh, understands its structure and uses a specialized columnar format to provide really efficient compression and query performance. So it will look at kind of the schema of the JSON and then uh, store it uh, appropriately for that structure, not just as a text blob. Um, single store Kai provides a MongoDB compatible interface to work with JSON data and other data in single store. And so that means that applications that are written to use MongoDB can use single store and take advantage of single store's uh, JSON acceleration features. And we've observed um, analytics queries in particular can be uh, highly accelerated, often 100 times faster. Um, and also any MongoDB application can leverage uh, single store's other advanced features like these vector search operations that I'll be, that I'll be demonstrating. Um, so, Yes, uh, finally, let's let's move uh, to the code. Um, okay, let me adjust uh, these slides here. Uh, before we jump to the code, um, to use, to follow along with this, and if we haven't shared the GitHub link, we'll share the GitHub link at the end of this presentation, you're going to need a single store endpoint. It's uh, simple to get one. Just go singlestore.com forward slash Kai. And um, you can click try single store Kai here. And you're, you're brought to this trial, uh, trial page. Uh, you can sign up, you get $600 of free credits. It's like four clicks. Um, and uh, this will provide you with what you need to uh, reproduce the demonstration that I'm about to show uh, on your own. Um, Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the uh, about the code. And I am pulling my uh, editor over here. Okay, hopefully everyone can see this. Um, I have this single store Kai examples GitHub project, and the example that we're talking about today is this Chat GPT example. Uh, this is a combination of a loader program to load the data and a Next.js program to uh, consume the data. Uh, here's an example of what this data looks like. Um, this is book information uh, from the open library. So we have uh, somewhere here, the title of the book, the subtitle, a set of subjects in an array, um, there's different uh, timestamps, uh, relationship to covers, uh, some stars information 
the stars information, uh, keep in mind, I added that as synthetic stars. I didn't use the actual reviews from Open Library. Uh, so when you see a book that you think is really great rated one star, it's because it's just random. Um, an author uh, relationship, uh, et cetera. So this, uh, this is sort of some typical lightly structured JSON. Um, the data set from Open Library, uh, I grabbed all of the fiction and nonfiction uh, works, and that came to about 340,000 items. Um, the next step was to get embeddings for those items, which uses this uh, prepare works script. So this is a fairly simple Node.js program. Um, it uses your OpenAI key to uh, for every uh, for every line of the input file, which is going to be representing a it's it's one piece of JSON per line. It takes some fields from that, which we want to generate the embedding for here, the title and the description. And then it submits those in a big batch to OpenAI. Uh, it's like 20,000 uh, uh, like length, tw the buffer can be 20,000 characters long at a time. And that's because OpenAI has uh, some content limits per call. But the more you can put into one call, the faster things things go. It's better to do fewer batched calls. Uh, so this goes through every line and uh, generates the embeddings and then stores the original document along with the embedding um, into an output uh, file. Uh, after that, we use a loader program that will use the single store Chi endpoint. Um, which you can get from that trial page to uh, basically just load all of those uh, JSON documents into the database. Uh, in this case, it creates the collection. Um, when it creates the collection, it uses a single store extension, which is to specify that the collection in addition to the JSON data has some structured columns. And we wanna put the embedding into a long blob column. And the reason for that is the single store uh, operations that work over vectors work most efficiently over these long blob columns. So it gives us some uh, better performance. Uh, so this is just a, um, oh, and then I also added uh, some stars uh, to, the, uh, to the document and uh, pulled out the first author um, uh, to make my query easier later. Uh, it pushes in batches of a thousand and, um, you know, this loads very, very quickly, um, much faster than generating the, the embeddings in the first place. Uh, so this is the extent of the loader program. It, the generation of the embeddings and the loading is, uh, you know, less than, um, less than 100 lines, I think, each. So it's not a whole lot of work that you have to do to get the data into the system. And, uh, and then we can start querying it. Uh, so let me talk a bit about the application um, that uh, we will use to query this data. So it's a Next.js 13 app. It's got three simple pages. Uh, the first one will just demonstrate getting the embeddings. Uh, so let me start this app up. So I'm just gonna run the development server locally here. And now we should uh, be able to refresh this. And it will compile this page again, and there we are. Okay, so let's look at first getting some of these embeddings uh, that we're gonna use for our query. So that page will do the following. Uh, it takes as an input two text strings. It will call OpenAI to create the embedding. Um, it's important we're using the same model that we used for all the book embeddings uh, for the query embeddings. Um, you have to use exactly the same model. And then um, in order to calculate the score, I'm just executing this uh, SQL query that takes the dot product of the, the first embedding versus the second and outputs the score. 
Uh, and this uses a single store Chi extension where I can use any arbitrary SQL to query my, uh, my data in addition to all of the MongoDB operations. And I did this just for, uh, for simplicity here since the, I could do it in a one-liner. So let's see an example of that. Uh, and I, okay. Uh, so we'll go to the first example. And let's talk a bit about uh, about these embeddings. So let's take, uh, for example, apple pie as one text string and apple m1 as another text string. When I click submit, this is going to go to uh, OpenAI, generate the embedding, then go to single store and get their score. And in this case, it says uh, these are pretty close, right? They both have apple. The model says, uh, you know, based on the embeddings generated by the model, their score is 0.84. The scores are arranged from zero to one, and this is a pretty good score. Uh, however, what if I replaced Apple M1 with Blackberry Pi? Sorry, uh, Blackberry Cobbler. Um, so in this case, we don't have any words the same. It's not related to apples. But when I submit this, I will get a higher score. And the reason is the meaning represented by these, uh, according to the model, is closer between apple pie and blackberry cobbler versus apple pie and apple M1, because you know it, it sort of you know understands, for some use of that word, uh, that apple pie is a food versus apple M1. Um, so this also can incorporate like seemingly knowledge from the world. Like, let's take another one here. A ship hits an iceberg and sinks and combine that with the word uh, gigantic. These don't seem very similar. And in fact, it's a pretty low score. However, if I replace gigantic with, you know, sort of a synonym, Titanic, at this point, the score is really high. And that's because the model has embedded uh, similar meaning into both, of, both the word Titanic and the ship that hits an iceberg and sinks. Uh, and this sort of um, meaning-based comparison uh, leads to much more relevant search queries in many situations. Uh, I have one more example here that will bring us sort of close to uh, closer to the book search, which we'll look at next. Uh, how about, why did the software developer cross the road? Um, and let's compare that to a possible book title here which is a programmer's guide to high performance databases, such as single store. And we'll click submit. And this is, you know, not too, not too close, 0.76. Uh, however, if we say, change it to a programmer's guide to high performance jokes, now we have a higher score. And it's this kind of nuance that the model, you know, teased out that the, First one is probably related to a joke because it's that standard joke format that can get you just the uh, you know slightly better search results that can power better applications. And um, if anyone is wondering, it's to uh, get to the other side. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, that's it for generating the embeddings. Um, but now let's use those embeddings to query the database. So I'm going to jump back to the uh, the code here. Um, let me pull this back over. Uh, so for querying the database, we're going to take a query from the user, generate an embedding, and then use it to find matching results. So that's uh, very similar to what we just saw. Uh, we take the OpenAI key, and we generate the embedding using the same model from the user's input. And um, then after we have that embedding, we get a Mongo client, which will be able will be used to query single store Kai. And we generate just a regular Mongo aggregation query. So here we use add fields with a single store extension operation called dot product to take the embedding uh, to take the dot product of the embedding versus our stored embedding. We make sure that the score is at least 0.78, which is just kind of a relevance threshold that suits my data set. And then I project out a bunch of the JSON information 
sort the data by the relevance. Uh, Z here is the calculated score of the embedding. Uh, do a lookup into another table of author information that I had also loaded and um, you know a final projection. This is all just standard MongoDB API uh, stuff um, that you do. Uh, then I render it into uh, a page of results. So let's take a quick look at how that uh, how that plays out. Um, second. Okay. And before I search this, I want to talk a bit about the alternative. So let's go to the actual open library. This is the open library website. The open library is great. Uh, and it has a pretty good search experience that I believe is based on more traditional full text search. If I enter a search query here, uh, hobbits throw ring into Mount Doom. I know that this is one of the Lord of the Rings book. I don't know which one. I just type what I think happens and I get no results. Um, I think that the computer system behind this should know enough in order to get me some results for this query. Let's try the same thing in a uh, single store with semantic search. So uh, hobbits throw ring into Mount Doom. Uh, and there we have the Fellowship of the Ring as the, uh, the top result. I think that's actually, okay. I think, yeah, Return of the King is the one where they actually throw it, but it's sort of what I was looking for. Um, and so you can see that uh, by looking at the meaning behind the text rather than the actual words using these semantic search features, it can be a more relevant search experience. Um, now, uh, here's a problem though with semantic search. Say I was not actually looking for the book. I was looking for some information maybe about the book or about J.R.R. Tolkien. I can add here nonfiction to this. And um, uh, it's done querying. It didn't change. It didn't help me because the semantic search is always a little bit fuzzy. It doesn't understand uh, or it can't express in the embedding vector the fact that nonfiction and fiction are really very distinct sets and shouldn't overlap and that I was requesting nonfiction. So how do we get a more relevant search um, that can actually understand that kind of concept? Uh, so one thing that I could do is I could build a like a structured query builder here where there's some, you know, some selectors on the left and I can pick nonfiction, I can maybe from drop downs, that sort of thing. And I have not uh, UI development is not my specialty. I used uh, the power of uh, ChatGPT to help me do the UI that you're looking at here. And I don't want to tackle that. And that's an expensive uh, proposition to create a structured query builder. And it's also harder for the user to use. I want to just write this. So how might I do this using some of the new AI features? Uh, so that's what we can get into now. And that's using the ChatGPT APIs. So let me get back to the code for this segment. So this is going to do something again, uh, very similar, but slightly less. And you, <laughs> you saw a preview there of uh, what's coming up next. Um, okay, so in this one, uh, we're using a feature called Type Chat. Uh, Type Chat is a library published by Microsoft that helps you craft structured queries to the chat GPT APIs. Um, I think that this is going to be, it was just released like a month ago. It's going to be incorporated into more and more of the standard tools that uh, uh, developers use to query these models. Um, what you do for type chat is you define a schema and you put a bunch of comments in it. Like I put a comment, this is a schema for querying the books database. And uh, anything general about the book description or title should go here. And the comments matter because this schema is compiled and then fed to the ChatGPT API for it to understand by the type chat uh, library. So I can say that I have a subjects field and it should be, you know, one of these, uh, one of these strings. And I explain some of these fields a bit more, tell it to normalize. 
And then finally, uh, in addition to book and subjects, um, I have a stars condition here where I want it to provide an op, which is one of the standard MongoDB uh, query operations, comparisons, and a value of one to five. So type chat will ask ChatGPT to produce a response that matches this schema, and it will uh, ensure that the response matches the schema. If it doesn't match, uh, type chat will tell chat GPT, hey, you got a little bit wrong. Can you fix it? And it'll go back and forth. Uh, usually it doesn't have to go back and forth. But what it means is that um, as, a, as a developer using this library, I can trust that I'm going to get back a response that matches this uh, TypeScript schema. Um, so what this code will do is it will you know, compile the schema, get the open AI, AI kind of client set up, and then it's going to take the user's input. It will use type chat to get the structured response. And then for each piece in the response, it will optionally add that to the MongoDB query that we're going to use for single store Kai. So uh, if there's a condition on subjects, it will do a match on you know, subjects that it's in the set. If it's a condition on stars, it will add the condition on stars. If we have a condition on book, that's what we wanted to use our embedding for. So it'll go and get the embedding, and then it will uh, add the dot product and then the condition on the score. And then finally, uh, add the rest of the stuff from the pipeline, which is what I had from the previous one, look up the author and that sort of thing. So let's see uh, how this works. Okay, so I'm going to enter the same query that I had before. And it has to compile there. Okay, so um, with just this, it picks out that this is the description and I get the same set of results. And now let's try when I really don't want the actual books, I want something nonfiction. At this point, type chat is able to ask ChatGPT for that structured response. It identifies the subject that I'm looking for. <clears throat> and instead of uh, uh, returning the fiction books, I get back all these um, nonfiction <clears throat> books about, about like the Cliffs Notes, I guess, uh, which is um, maybe what I'm looking for. Uh, so you could do this with the stars condition as well. Um, and I am going to enter some another, another query here. Uh, New York Times bestseller, at least four stars, Viv the Orc. This is something that I heard about from, uh, from my friend, maybe. And uh, type chat will use ChatGPT to pull out the structure. And it says, okay, New York Times bestseller, Viv the Orc, stars condition, greater than or equal to four. It's so cool how uh, you know ChatGPT could do that, and then I get back this book that I'm looking for, Legends, Legends and Lattes. Um, so this can be uh, a really powerful search experience. I added only a few conditions here, but you can actually give Type Chat your entire JSON schema and just say, uh, ask ChatGPT to generate like Mongo queries using that schema. Uh, you know, if you're <laughs> If you're willing to trust your user uh, to not do some kind of uh, query that's going to, you know, be too hard on your database, you know, depending on the context, uh, but that can provide like really excellent flexibility in querying a JSON data set and combining it with other advanced features like um, like the dot product and semantic search. Uh, so there's one more thing that I wanted to show uh, from this. Let's take the same query. And you might wonder why can't you just use chat GPT uh, and forget about all this other stuff, forget about generating the embeddings, forget about uh, the, um, uh, the, the database and all that. Uh, well, let's try chat GPT here. I'm gonna use GPT-4, the fanciest uh, model that they have. Um, and I love, G I love this uh, GPT-4, I used it to help me develop that UI, like I mentioned. 
And let's see what it says for New York Times bestseller, at least uh, four stars, uh, Viv the Orc. And as we're going to get this response that we've all seen over and over, as of my training data in September 2021, and uh, the reason for this is this book, this book won like a bunch of awards, but came out in 2022. So it has zero knowledge of this book. Um, despite that, it was able to, you know, help with querying our database that does include the information on this book. Um, and in fact, uh, the database uh, through, you know, ingestion mechanisms can be kept up to, up to the, uh, you know, up to the millisecond up to date with new information. The other thing that ChatGPT can't do um, is use your internal company information. Like I used the books example here because it's kind of cool. Like I get the book covers, everyone knows the book names that we're searching for and that sort of thing. But you could imagine using um, your own internal company data. Maybe it's like order records or insurance quotes or some domain specific giant data set that you have. And you're not going to feed the whole thing to ChatGPT. You can't feed the whole thing to ChatGPT but you can generate embeddings from that data set, store it in a single store database, and then query it using uh, the help of ChatGPT to form the queries uh, or you know, other, um, other ways of getting the embeddings uh, as well. So um, that is why in addition, uh, you know, that, that's why having the data in your own database and using some of these features uh, kind of goes well beyond just Know, querying the the open AI APIs um, by themselves. Uh, okay, so I think, let me go back to the slides here. Um, oh, I'll say one more thing. All the code that I showed, and I think you'll get a link to this too, it's up on GitHub in single store labs, single store Kai examples. Uh, the one for the webinar is in chat GPT. Um, if you have any uh, issue running this example yourself, uh, please let me know. Um, and you could just file an issue here or, or get in touch with us uh, through the other, I guess, feedback uh, mechanisms we'll, we'll share. Um, but uh, this should let you generate, you know, get the data yourself, generate the embeddings, uh, load it and try, try out everything uh, that you saw today uh, using your own single store instance. Uh, now back to the slides. Okay, and I'll mention again, if you're going to set up your own single store instance, you should use this link. This link will enter you uh, into a chance to get um, the, uh, the AirPods Pro. I unfortunately am not eligible despite wanting to get an AirPods Pro with the single store logo. Maybe I'll get one eventually. Uh, but uh, please follow this. Uh, it takes, like I said, it's like four clicks. Um, for a different demo, I had to do it like a hundred times and uh, it's not, it's not, it doesn't take very long. Um, so uh, let's see. Uh, and this slide, I guess I already sort of talked to. For ChatGPT, it can't get their most recent data and private data. Uh, one more thing to mention. Um, why not just a vector database to do these vectors? And I think we saw that as well. Um, you know, it was really the combination of the vector storage with the JSON query capabilities that made this a powerful demo. The one we did in the middle where it was just querying the vectors, it couldn't do things like the nonfiction piece or the you know conditions on stars. It was too fuzzy for that. And that's why having a database that combines like other types of structured queries with the vectors is, is very useful. So uh, I'm going to turn it back over to Matt to close this out. Um, and uh, awesome. thanks to everyone for following along. Awesome. Thank you, Jason. This was a awesome presentation and demo. We can now jump into the Q&A session. Uh, just as a reminder for everyone, that Q&A functionality is at the bottom portion of your Zoom console. Feel free to, uh, to use it throughout here. We've got had a lot of great questions come in while Jason was presenting, so I'll start with those, but we'll also keep a keep an eye on the new questions coming in, so keep them coming. The, uh, the first question I have is from Anurag. It is, how would you upload the data for around 25 million records with more than 200 
50 columns and is the data frequently updating? Um, so, uh, assuming this is JSON data, uh, or really any, any data, um, when it's stored in single store, it's going to be, uh, optimized in that column storage format and 250 columns is not, not an issue. Um, there could be 250 key paths in a single JSON blob or 250 structured columns. And, you know, that's, that's kind of normal, I think. And that type of the amount of data there as well is um, uh, not really unusual. Uh, I think that the, um, uh, I mean, how you would upload it, uh, single store has a feature called pipelines that can do that sort of data ingestion very, very quickly. Um, I usually do it with the single store Kai uh, bulk uh, insert APIs, the regular MongoDB bulk insert APIs, or I use, uh, if, I, if I'm if i taking it from a MongoDB database, I use MongoDB dump and MongoDB restore. And um, for the bulk ingestion, uh, we, we've really optimized uh, that pipeline, so it, it goes very quickly. Um, and then as far as keeping it up to date, uh, the, the way that single stores universal storage works is it will, as data is ingested, it ingests very quickly and it goes into a, um, a row storage segment uh, that uh, is, is able to allow the kind of very quick updates, you know, very uh, low latency writes. And then over time, I, when that segment gets to a certain size or at a certain uh, a time has passed, it will analyze chunks of that and, and store that in the efficient uh, column storage format to support better analytics queries. And so what this means for large data sets is you can be continuously ingesting um, like, you know, 20,000 rows a second or something. Uh, and um, uh, in addition to having a lot of data already, and then run queries that give you up to the, you know, up to the millisecond results. Um, and I think I have, I mentioned 20,000 because I have a video that I did of this uh, somewhere up on our single store YouTube, uh, where um, you know I show I show a demo of of loading that sort of data. Uh, that's that's something that we um, we've you know that's a, a a common need, and so that's a scenario we focused on. Awesome. Here's another. It's follow up from Anurag. It's how would we deal with images if we wanted to store and call by query? So um, you can generate embeddings from images as well. And uh, that can be really cool. I don't have a, like a demo prepared for that. And I, uh, the images you saw today were just you know the covers of the books that weren't actually searched. But you can use a model to generate the embeddings from the images. And then you can use uh, uh, another, uh, another model to generate compatible embeddings from text queries that then allow you to search those images using the same sort of text querying that I um, that I showed today. Uh, and those embeddings can be stored and searched in single store in exactly the same way as text-based embeddings. It doesn't really matter like what how the embeddings are, generated once you have them in that form and can run the dot product on them, you can do this sort of search on top of them. Awesome. Here's uh, here's one from Fat Tran. How about using cosine to compute similarity? What are the pros and cons of this versus the dot product approach? So from my understanding, dot product with normalized vectors is equivalent to cosine similarity. Um, we also support other operations that are slightly different, like Euclidean distance. Um, but uh, I'm not an expert on the nuance between between these different modes. Uh, although the all the important ones that people seem to want to use are are primitives in the single store uh, uh, vector operation set of operations. Good stuff. Here is another one, a follow up. Same same. Uh audience member. And uh, by the way, Akmal can also chime in on any of these. I know he's trying to, he's trying furiously trying to answer these in progress. But the question is, 
Is there a migration runbook for data from other database technologies, such as Postgres, Bigtable, Dynamo, to single store? Um, Jason, uh, maybe I can chime in, and then if you have some comments. Uh, so, uh, Matt, so of course, you know, we work with lots of uh, customers who uh, do exactly that kind of thing. Uh, I think there is no single tool that we have that would uh, assist in that scenario. Sometimes it's custom code that we build. Sometimes it can be done other ways, um, pipelines, for example, uh, or simple dumps, as uh, Jason was mentioning. I mean, there are different ways that we would do it. And it's a, a question of really understanding the customer requirement, how much of that data needs to come across, or if it's a complete migration, that might be a lengthy process. Um, we are MySQL wire compatible, so that's really helpful. And uh, of course, the pipelines capability we have is an awesome way to kind of stream data in from an external source. Uh, and that could be, uh, you know, a, one suitable way to do that. But I think it really depends on customer needs. Good stuff. There's a there's a great question there from Catherine, uh, which is kind of outstanding there, Matt, if you see it there. So she's asking, how long does the W get? Uh, and this is, for, I think, for you, Jason, the openlibrary.org uh, dump work latest txc.gz command usually take. So I guess that's for you, Jason. So yeah, how long does it usually take you? I'm so excited that that means that someone is actually trying the demo. Uh, so please, if you have any hiccup with it, you know, let us know. Uh, they throttle their download speed. It's annoying. Uh, I had to wait, I don't know, like 45 minutes on my connection for it. Uh, it's not your connection. It's them throttling their download, uh, I think, to protect their infrastructure. But uh, it won't be too bad. It's like, uh, I think that one is, um, I don't know, it's a, it's under 100 gigabytes. So it, sh it you know, just, just go have some patience. That's what I had to do. Uh, I walked away and got some lunch or something and came back and it was done. Interestingly, Catherine's just uh, posted a follow-up. She, she says it took around five to 10 minutes, which is great. Oh, well, that's, that's not bad. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Good stuff. Here's, here's another question. This one is anonymous, but uh, if someone uses the input box to try to search the database 1 million times, will the model execute it or is the model smart enough to stop that search? Um, so the, I didn't put, so if you're looking at the code that, that I put to GitHub, there's no kind of protections against that uh, as is. And um, if you were to productize this and throw this into your actual application, uh, there's probably a couple things you'd want to do. Um, uh, number one is if you have, like often you'll have people use the same query over and over. Um, and so you'd want to have some kind of a cache of embeddings for, for like identical texts, because that'll just save calls, uh, um, to open AI. And, um, also you might want to have some type of, uh, throttling or just, uh, uh, detection of like weird situations like that. If the rate gets too high, if you're generating too many calls to open AI, you know, maybe that's, uh, uh, something you'd want to rate limit on that particular user. I, I think your what you'd want to do depends on whether this is like an internal application um, or if this is something like, like you could imagine open library putting this as a extension to their own search on their website. They might have to be a bit more protective over potential abuse like that uh, than you would for an internal application. But uh, certainly none of the none of the code that I put on GitHub does any of that uh, quite yet. Good stuff. Another question, this one was from Vinay Kumar. How does the nested data in JSON stored in single store DB, as said, converts into columnar format? Uh, so this is this is super cool. I've done a bunch of work on this. Um, it, uh, it uses techniques that are similar to um, what you'd find in the, it's it's not using Parquet, but it's similar techniques to flattening that you might find in Parquet format. So you can go and, and take a look at how Parquet works, but uh, basically it will, um, like if you have an array of say, say the subjects array in the books, it's an array of words. Um, 
it will create a single column from that array and there will just be many, many entries in the column per document. So if a document has 10 items in its array, you'd have 10 entries in that column uh, and all of those entries would map back to that same document. Uh, what this lets you do is you do it, it, it enables compression over like all of the documents and all of the arrays in the document, and it enables uh, extremely fast searching uh, over all of the arrays in all of the documents. Um, this encoding works particularly well for like how array based searches work with uh, MongoDB uh, query language, where you just do like, you know, A dot B. And if B is an array, it'll search in the array. Um, that maps very well into like a single uh, uh, search in a single column in the, uh, the format that we use. All right, great. Here's two from Tim, Tim Roberts. Uh, the first is uh, ADA002 text model versus GPT 3.5 turbo or GPT-4, would we have very different results? Uh, so the ADA002 text model is a model designed for creating embeddings. Um, it produces as its output, like one of these vectors that you can store in your database. Uh, it always just produces the vector as its output. Um, so the purpose of that model is for uh, generating the embeddings. Um, and it's also not expensive and they keep lowering the price. Like it seems like every couple of months they take the price down by a factor of four again. So very inexpensive model to use and you can use it to generate just bulk embedding data. Uh, the, the two chat models, uh, GPT-35 Turbo and GPT-4, um, they are uh, for a different purpose, they can't generate embeddings. They um, generate kind of whatever you ask for in like free text. Uh, and then it's the type chat library on top of that that kind of forces that response back into a JSON blob you can consume. Um, I haven't tried, uh, for the purposes of this demo, the chat GPT-35 Turbo was, uh, good enough, like completely good enough to do what it needed to do to extract those pieces from my query and form a structured query. Uh, I haven't tried GPT-4 API uh, for that purpose. Um, I know that when I'm asking like freeform questions about like how to write the UI for the demo uh, and I'm using chat GPT, GPT-4 is, is way better at that. So um, I think depending on, on the complexity of your query that you needed to generate, you might get better results with GPT-4, but that's not something I had tried for this uh, this demo. Good stuff. Follow-up question from Tim. What about the tokens used? Do you have any idea for your demo? Yeah, so uh, in the GitHub code, there's um, there's like two, uh, two data sets that I mentioned in the readme. One is if you're just looking at science fiction and fantasy books, it's about 30,000 records. And then one is all of the fiction and nonfiction books. And um, I think uh, the biggest one cost me about, like, I think it was between one and $2 to generate the embeddings for all of those items. Uh, and um, uh, the the smaller one is is was like, you know, just a few cents uh, to generate those embeddings. Uh, so it's uh, it's not too too expensive. Um, I think that there's other ways to generate embeddings too. You don't have to use the uh, OpenAI APIs. Um, and in fact, you can still use their ChatGPT APIs to generate the structured queries, even if you use something else to generate the embeddings. And so if you have your own models hosted, or um, some other service, you can also generate bulk embeddings with, with those two. But if you're just looking to reproduce the demo, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, a couple dollars at, at most with, with how it was working for me. Good stuff. Here is another question from Fat Tran. I know this question has actually come up in previous recent webinars. So, uh, you know, Akmal, you can chime in too if you want, or, you know, I'll pose it to Jason, but, 
The question is, what are the advantages and disadvantages of single store over other popular competitors like Pinecone, PG Vector, DuckDB, et cetera? Um, I can I can offer my perspective on that, and then uh, maybe maybe uh, others can chime in. But the the big one for me, uh, you know, I've used Pinecone a little bit just to try it. I I followed some examples, and the um, it's very focused on the vectors and uh, storing different different vectors, and you can add metadata to them. But the ability to query, to do structured queries over that metadata, and to um, uh, uh, have other sorts of operations like geospatial and such it falls a lot it, it falls way short compared to uh to a more general purpose database like like single store and i really think it's the combination of the vectors with other more more uh traditional database capabilities where you get the most value out of even using vectors in the first place um i think uh Single store compared to Postgres and PG vector has, um, you know, there's a lot of differences between those databases, especially in their performance characteristics. I don't know if uh, someone else wants to wants to chime in on some of that, uh, but um, yeah, J Jason, this is VJ. Uh, let yeah. me chime in a little bit on that. So, um, so compared to if you say comparing single store against a core specialized vector database, right, like a Pinecone, Melvis, VV8, or Zills, uh, I would say there are a few key differences. Number one, most of them don't support SQL, right? So you have to use custom code or custom programming languages, which gives you really not much of a flexibility or analytical capabilities, right? So that's number one. We are we are relational, but again, we as as you saw today, we also support JSON, vectors, time series, a bunch of other data sources, right? What that means is, um, if you use um, if you use something like uh, Pinecone, it only supports vectors. You don't have an ability to combine that vector and vector data with other types of data types, right? More importantly, uh, one key thing I think I, which I think Jason referred to today was the concept of a hybrid search, right? So, how do you do a semantic search with a full text search in a single SQL query, right? Things like that, which is which is really not possible in a in a very vector specific database. Again, keep in mind um, if you're thinking about powering your application, you, you're looking for enterprise capabilities. You need to be able to mix and match data types. You, you need to be able to ma ma match or mix vector data with other data types, including time series, relational data, JSON data, so on and so forth. Right? That's where the future is headed. So obviously, um, vector specific databases offer very little. Uh, capability there. And one last thing I would also keep in mind is as people are looking at making these decisions, think of the fact that, um, think about the broader enterprise capability, things like asset compliance, HA capabilities, DR, point-in-time recovery, uh, multi-AZ failover. These, these enterprise capabilities take a long time to mature. Like we developed them over 12, 13 years, right? And a lot of these newer entrants or newer databases really leave a lot to be desired when it comes to enterprise capabilities as well. So those are some of the key things you might want to keep in mind as you're looking about looking about adding a vector specific database uh, to your equation. So our suggestion would be to instead of focusing on a vector database specifically, why not go for an enterprise grade database that has vector capabilities, right? So something like single store that gives you a broader stroke and a broader array of capabilities that goes along with your vector capabilities. Awesome. Good stuff. With one minute left, I think we should move on from the questions and start to wrap up. Uh, just quick note before we announce the AirPods winner. As I mentioned during the intro, next week we will be presenting how to drive 100x faster analytics for your MongoDB apps. During that time, Akmal, who you've seen here today in the, in the panelist group, Akmal will be presenting how to drive 100x faster analytical queries on JSON using the MongoDB API that doesn't require any query changes or transformation. It's very cool. Uh, feel free to register right now at the link that's on your screen. I'm also going to put that into the chat. You can use that QR code too, if you like. There it is in the chat. Uh, the announcement you've been waiting for, today's AirPods winner goes to Fat Tran, uh, software engineer at, at SailPoint in Toronto, Canada. You've been active in the chat as well. It's good to see you. Congrats. 
Thanks again for joining. If that's not you, don't give up. We're going to announce one more AirPods winner by the end of the day for anyone who has tried out the GitHub demo. So feel free to uh, keep an eye on your email. I'm going to send out the webinar recording for everyone along with this, uh, this GitHub link um, that I put in chat. I'll put that in chat one more time. Um, so try that all out. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you to Jason for an awesome presentation today. And thank you to Akmal VJ for joining the uh, webinar support team. Have a great day, everyone. We really appreciate your time. Thanks Bye -bye. so much. Bye, everyone.